beautiful people and welcome to you had me at bonjour the vlog getting intimate with amy dresner so amy and i are going to do things a little bit differently today as she nears the end of her work um, around sex and love addiction we've gone through you know all of the patterns and all the exercises culminating with her dating plan and recovery plan and uh, so a few months ago we started something called ipf ideal parent figure protocol. And this is a modality developed by Daniel P. Brown at Harvard University in which I'm learning from him in supervision. And so IPF has at its base an understanding of the security of attachment. Um, so this is about the experience that we had with our primary caregivers in childhood. It's not about replacing or correcting that experience. It's actually about creating a brand new experience through the power of imagination because imagination creates new possibilities. So the experiences that we did have in our actual childhood sort of created an imprint on us um, in terms of how we understand ourselves and how we understand the world and how we love. And that imprint is called an internal working model. So what we do through the power of the imagination with IPF is creating a new internal working model. So what we want to do is create pristine new entries into our perceptual database. And then we can make new choices based on those new pristine entries. So it's sort of like a love map and we're going to give you a brand new one so you can go to new places and make new choices. It's very exciting. Um, it's a really powerful modality and, you know, it works. Um, there's a lot more information about it out there. There's more information on my website. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And so we're going to be going through this process with Amy today. And what we do is sort of like a guided meditation, similar to hypnotherapy, where the facilitator, that's me, is going to be taking the client, that's Amy, uh, through this process and sort of guiding them um, to imagine a new set of ideal parent figures. So this is not Amy's first session. We've been doing this for a while. The ideal parent figure that she chose is an ideal parent self. Um, it can really be anything as long as it's the ideal caregiver that was perfect for you. So it can be a bear, it can be a flower, it can be a set of drawings from a magazine, it can be a tarot card, it can be based on someone that you've seen but never met, right? It just can't be someone that you actually know, it can't be based on actual caregivers. So it's coming from your imagination, right? Um, because real humans are flawed and imperfect and they make mistakes, right? So that's why I say we're not trying to replace um, the actual experience that you had. We're just giving you a brand new experience and a brand new love map to operate from. So here we go. <laughs> we're going to see what this is like. And again, if you have questions, please reach out to me. I'll see you on the other side. All right, baby. So you were just telling me about um bringing your book to your agent and and not hearing what you wanted to hear and how that felt kind of crushing which anyone can relate to and i'm wondering if that triggered something in you it totally I triggered i just felt like i cried for two days i got very depressed i had worked really hard on this proposal i think he's right and i think it'll be a better book but that's not what i wanted to hear and it just on top i just it triggered like a avalanche of financial fear. Like, how come I don't have a partner? Like, what's wrong with me? Like, I wrote that one book and I'm just a one book wonder. Like, you know, uh, why I'm helping people and I'm broke. Like, I just enormous amount of self pity and then like a humongous amount of compare and despair, just like jealousy central around other people. And like, I had already been pretty depressed and I did reach out to my primary and I was like, hey, like I fucking need to change my meds, dude, between my epilepsy, my perimenopause and whatever's going on. Like, you know, I shouldn't be in bed crying all the time. Like, and you know, mm -hmm. so, so can you, can you name the feeling? Like defeat shame um feeling really overwhelmed incredibly disappointed um scared really scared like playing sia 
you can do anything and just like crying, like trying to get myself pumped up, you know, because, you know, and it was like, please, God, show me what this is supposed to be so I can help people. And I was like, I was like, oh, there's a closet Christian in there somewhere. And that's creepy. <laughs> and like, you know, I was just like, yeah, you know, yeah. I but so really... I want to, I'm sorry to interrupt you, sweetheart, but I just, I want to bring you back to that feeling because that's going to be how we enter it through the IPF and we're going to do IPF today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to that feeling and we'll take that feeling into the IPF and work with it and see what we find and see what we can discover and see what we can do with it. All right, my dear. So you can just start to relax in your body, both feet on the ground. Yeah. I don't like that burn. I like to sit across the tall chair. Yeah. Okay. And just start bringing your focus to your breath. Oh, could there be more? Oh, there's all my colonoscopy stuff. That's nice in the background. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my dear. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't know why I want, no one wants to date me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, baby. Just settle in. Yeah, there you go. And just keep focusing on the rhythm of your breath. And the more you focus on your breath, the more calm and relaxed you become. And now begin to allow the out breath to be a little longer and a little slower than the in breath. And as you continue to let that out breath go a little slower and a little longer, you become even more calm and relaxed. In a moment, I'm going to count slowly from one to five. And with each number, you find yourself floating along on soft, warm clouds. And when I finish counting to five, the clouds will have taken you to a place that's especially safe and secure. One, floating along. Two, light and easy. Three, buoyant. Four, just comfortably floating. And five, settling down in your secure and safe place. And even though a short amount of clock time has passed, it seems as if you've been in this place for much longer long enough to feel completely safe and secure. And now I want you to bring to mind the state of mind that we discussed, this feeling of fear, anger, disappointment, overwhelm, jealousy, defeated, shame. Trapped, trapped is a good one too. Trapped, good. And like you're turning up the volume on a stereo, just turn that feeling up so you can really feel it strongly in the present moment. You can feel it in your body and you have a clear sense of what that feeling is for you. And just give me a nod when you're there. Okay. So this is an old and familiar feeling. So now I want you to let yourself go back in time to your childhood when you felt this feeling in a way that was just so characteristic? That we were at someone's house, this guy's house, and everyone was jumping off the roof into the pool. And I went onto the roof and I felt too scared to do it. And I, I climbed back down. <laughs> I was convinced I was going to miss the pool and fall on the pavement and die. <clears throat> okay. And then just different. Like my mom, I told you, dressed me different. She was a designer and would bring all this weird shit from Paris, which was cool, except that it wasn't cool in the States yet because it was they were so ahead. So I would be wearing you know, stuff that was, you know, a couple of years ahead and everyone would make fun of me. Okay, good. 
So now imagine your ideal parent self is there in the scene as well. And she arrives and she sees exactly what's going on. She tunes right into you and exactly how you're feeling. And she knows how to respond in the way that you need in exactly the way that's always been right for you. So just imagine that now. What's happening now? So I just went in and I said, you're beautiful. And I said, I don't feel beautiful. And I just said, you know, you're going through an awkward stage and that's okay. And I go, but I don't, I looked very Jewish too. I didn't, I didn't like that. <clears throat> and I said, uh, I said, I'm different. And my ideal parent said, it's good to be different. It's good to be special. And I said, it doesn't feel good. And then I recalled, this was a feeling that has came, um, like haunted me uh, for most of my life. And then I think I was in junior high when my father wrote me a poem. And it was the same feeling. I was a Jew and I was in Catholic school and it was really awkward with fucking like braces and glasses and really lanky. And you know what I mean? Like curly hair that I was trying to make straight and just really awkward stage and my father wrote me a poem called Lily and it was like everyone made fun of Lily because she was tall and she had this funny skin and she da 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 and it was like I don't remember the whole poem but the thing was like but they were Lily was a flower and they were all weeds like always felt different which is very alcoholic mm. and he was like you're special which is your your ideal parent self know that she knows exactly how to care for you nobody knows better than her what you needed in that moment I don't recall anyone else being shifted around so much either. Mm. You know what I mean? Like between parents and houses and stuff. Everyone else was kind of like lived in the same house all week and weekend. And I, I was shuttled around a lot between my parents. Mm. Right. Which was disorienting. Mm -hmm. And she sees that too. She sees how different you feel and you being shuttled around. She sees all of it. She sees all of you. And she's able to respond in a way that helps you to feel accepted. Just she's able to soothe you in that moment and respond in exactly the way that you need. I just, uh, something came to me. I, I don't know if I've told you this before, but it's on the school bus. I was, again, probably eight or something. And one of my best friends, who was kind of mean, actually, um, she had a cold or something, and she sneezed into her hands, and she was like, oh, God. And I go, what? Let me see. She goes, you don't want to see. And I go, let me see. And she showed me, and it was like a handful of like green mucus. And I threw up on the bus in front of everybody. And everyone was like, ew, like Amy. Like, and everyone got off the bus, and the bus driver was like hosing it down. And she was like, it's okay. Like, it's okay. And I felt embarrassed and ashamed. And she goes, do you want a mint? I recall that very cool. She's just like, would you like a mint? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And she was really kind about it. But that's the time when I recall feeling like ashamed by a lot of people. And then that came up again when I did Landmark, when everyone when that guy shamed me in front of 100 people, 150 people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just let your, 
And let your ideal parent self arrive on this scene at the school bus. She shows up, she's right there with you. She knows you better than anybody. And she really wants to be there for you. She sees that you're hurting. And she's able to respond to you in exactly the way that you needed. So just imagine that now. What's happening now? So I show up and I said, you know, when I held my younger self and I just said, you know, uh, you know, are you still nauseous? And I said, no. And I said, and I said, everyone's going to make fun of me. And everyone saw it. And I said, you know, anyone would have thrown up. That's disgusting. You know what I mean? Like, and you're super sensitive. And that's a really cool thing. Like, that's going to serve you later. Like, being sensitive is a, is a gift. And I just said, you know, do you? I said, they're going to forget about it. Don't worry about it. I said, who cares what they think? I said, do you want to skip the rest of school? Or do you want to go? Do you want to go do something fun? Do you want to go, you know? And I just kind of like talked it through. And I just kind of like see the small me like clinging to me, me stroking my hair and going, it's okay. You know, it's okay. You know? Beautiful, sweetheart. Yeah. This ideal parent self is able to give you what, what you need with exactly the right amount of closeness or distance, exactly the right combination of soothing both physically and verbally. And she sees you in a way that allows you to feel deeply seen and deeply known. She sees your gifts. She sees your resilience. And you know that she's there to protect you. She's fierce about protecting you. She's ready to take you right out of there. And so you begin to trust her. And just keep going with that scene and see what happens next. And what's happening now? So the little me said to the bus driver, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And the bus driver said, oh, don't even worry, but this happens all the time <laughs> because it was the Laurel Canyon and it's really, really like windy roads too. Mm -hmm. And she said, this happens all the time. It's some bumpy roads, windy. She's like, please, like I would have thrown up too, girl, you know, and I was like, and um, I said, do you want to go to school? I said, see, it's not a big deal. I was like, who cares? And I said, do you want to go to school? And I said, they're going to make fun of me and say, you puked, you puked. And I said, okay, well, you know, you can go and get it over with and whatever. I said, or you can deal with it tomorrow, but it will pass. I said, if you don't feel like you want to, like, you know, deal with it today and you feel nauseous and you don't want to, that's cool. I was like, whatever you want to do. I said, it's really, I promise this is going to pass and no one's going to think about it tomorrow. Great. Notice how there's no limit to the care that this ideal parent self is willing to give, not because it's her job, but because she delights in being your parent, because she adores you, and she's so happy to be able to be your parent. And just keep going and see what you discover next. There's really not anything else. I just, you know, said to him, oh, poor sensitive Tommy. Someone's got a sense of tummy. That's okay. And if you want to play hooky, we can do something else. You you tell me what you need. That was really a, it's not, there's nothing more. Great. I don't recall 
anything else about that incident. So in a moment, I'm gonna ask you to awaken yourself. I'll count from five to one. With each number, you'll find yourself waking up. And when I reach one, you'll be fully awake and settled with your experience, but you'll have a deep impression of the way that your ideal parent self was being with you so that you can develop it from here. Five, beginning to awaken. Four. Three. Two, one, fully awake and settled with your experience. Does that seem like really minor compared to like other people's stuff? It seems like other people like have like um, really gnarly physical abuse and like um, sexual abuse and my stuff's like really minor. Mm. Like I'm a big baby and like traumatized by really minor shit. Oh, honey. Anyone can see why these things would be traumatizing. Yeah. So what was that like for you? It was okay. It was not as hard as some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. some of the other ones were a lot more painful. Mm -hmm. You're getting better at this too. You're developing the skill, you're developing the muscle. Yeah, and you're making progress. You did some beautiful yeah. work today, yeah. Thank you, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really lovely to see. So we have to close because I have my call with Patty, um, but you did such great work, sweetheart, and you're yeah. so brave. I really want to acknowledge you, yeah, for, for going back in there and just sticking with it. And I think we need to just stay consistent. I'm, I'm going to try and figure out, I don't know what we need to do with the blog, but I think we need to stay consistent with the IPF and do it without fail once a week. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And just stay really consistent with it now so that you can make the progress you need to make, you know, so you can start dating again because you do want a partner and you deserve a partner, baby. Yeah, someone liked a bunch of pictures on my Facebook and I was like, it's a friend of someone in Encinitas. So and she's like, are you interested? And I was like, I need to collect some intel. Like, you know, is he tall? Is he funny? I mean, it's not necessarily my types. So he looks attractive in some pictures and some not so much. Some of those pants and shoes need to go. I don't know. I like that he can cook and fix things. I mean, I was just like, you know, but I don't, again, at least I'm not like, oh, whoever likes me, yay, like they're in, you know what I mean? Like, I'm kind of like, well, I'm not sure, you know, that's nice, but I'm not sure. Good. So that's progress. For sure. For real. For sure. Mm -hmm.